Nein. Wie If you're ready, do you also? Yeah. Okay. So, good evening. Um, my name is Angela Barasio, and I'm the principal of Pearson School, and it's my privilege tonight to be here to talk to you about the next phase of where the children go after they leave our colleagues um, at Joel School. Um, their parents bring them to the school that they feel looks so much bigger. Um, when they stand in the parking lot and they look up, they're going from the Northwest Fallen School to a school that is three levels, and I think that sometimes they, look, they feel a little in intimidated um, when they're outside. But once inside, they quickly realize that um, Pearson School is a rather small school. We have only grades four and five there. And, um, they quickly uh, learn to navigate their way around the school and become um, at home and uh, become uh, comfortable with their learning in uh, a grade four and five environment. So tonight I'd like to speak with you about our proposal for a grade 14-15 budget. And when one sets out to create a budget, um, it's important to have a framework. So at Pearson School and like my colleagues, um, before and those that will come after me, they uh, we use our district's driving courses and unifying principles, which are the, they're like the, the guide, the, the standards by which we make our decisions. Um, the foundation skills and competencies that's where we actually see the children putting their work and their learning to use. You know, is it can a child take some lear new learning and apply it, and can they do it in a manner that is um, you know, creative and able to get their ideas across to other people. Um, I was at a sports um, sports banquet yesterday, and I saw all of the young athletes getting out and using their skills and talents to speak about another person on the team. That's the kind of thing that we need. Children who can take what they learn in a class about how to read and how to write and then begin to create speeches, create persuasive arguments, use math talk um, so that they can actually um, apply their learning. Um, when making the decisions, we look to our district goals that Mr. Cross has already um, shared with us. And um, it's very important that Abraham Pearson's school goals are nestled under district goals um, so that we have a continuity and that the children receive an education that is contiguous and that there are no gaps over time. But that takes a lot of collaboration and a lot of conversation. Um, sometimes going, you know, late into evening meetings, talking with colleagues about how best to align our district goals and our school goals. And then, of course, we have our Abraham Pearson School Goals. Our mission at Abraham Pearson School took a lot of effort to get us to this point, but our goal is to foster thinking, creativity, and a love of learning that will motivate students to make the world a better place. And children in fourth and fifth grade are just beginning to be aware uh, that they can make a difference. And to this end, um, I have students use their persuasive writing um, skills when they, two girls in fifth grade, and then separately, two girls in fourth grade, wrote letters to me asking if they could spearhead fundraisers. And they wrote a persuasive essay articulating point by point by point by point on why they should be, able to be committed to do this. In the end, their essays went to the school leadership team, we accepted their proposal, and that's our December uh, school and community service project. So that making the world a better place, we take that very seriously. Of course, it starts with their world, constantly talking about how they can make their classrooms a better place, their school, and their homes. So our district initiatives are developing literacy in the core disciplines. Um, we are looking to identify common expectations and quality instructional approaches in language arts. Um, this takes place in several different settings. At Pearson School, there are four, uh, there are two grade levels, and they're broken into four teams. So there are teams of either three or four teachers who are partnered with a um, special education a teammate and frequently the literacy or the math uh, specialist will sit in on the meetings. At those meetings, 
we look to um, review student progress. We look to see about upcoming lessons. And just this past week, we were looking at student scores um, on an open-ended response. And we found that some of the rigor that we would like to see for our students were not was not included in a rubric that was from the publishing company. And we, as a school-based team, decided that next time around, we're going to up the ante for Christian school students um, in the particular aspect of um, open-ended responses. Uh, like our colleagues at Joel, we are um, developing a deeper understanding about Common Core state standards, and that looks like looking at mathematical practices with a real focus on what's called number talks, which is having the children solve problems mental using mental math by talking in a script and applying um, those concepts that they've learned mathematically. And um, it's really exciting to listen on in one of those um, conversations and to see how children can apply their learning. We also look to embed the application of knowledge and skills in all learning experiences. And we're looking at our Journeys uh, language arts program and our math program to look for ways to increase levels of student engagement so that there's less teacher direction and more student work. We have teachers that work very, very hard at Pearson School. The secret is to get the kids to work harder, you know, so that they are actually the ones that are producing the products. Again, like our colleagues, we're looking at technology integration, um, specifically having our uh, students use the smart boards and the videos that are each uh, in each homeroom. Um, we have a program in the afternoons called um, Integrated Technology where integrated studies where they come together and students produce either PowerPoints or brochures using the um, technology that we have in an integrated man manner. And that focuses also on our cross-curricular connections, helping kids see the connections with their learning. Um, so our high-performing teams, that is really huge at Pearson School because right now uh, we have I've done a lot of work with the SRBI process um, in reading, math, and behavior. And something unique happened last year. We ended up with a new reading specialist, a new math coach, and a new psychologist. So as a means of trying to have them form a team and articulate expectations in each one of their own discipline, they worked together for several sessions, um, the outcome was they were able to articulate to the faculty the intervention process at Pearson School. Um, that, that came about, they started the project last uh, spring. They worked on it over the summer on their own, which I might add no cost to us. And they presented at the August PD. And um, they really work hard to articulate that the intervention concepts are um, across reading, math, and behavior um, disciplines. We are also working hard to um, with the co-teaching model, and that's, that's not up there, but the co-teaching model and um, a, a team approach to uh, general and special education, and um, looking at how we can best uh, keep children in the classroom and have them be the ones that are feeling successful through differentiating instruction. Um, like our colleagues, we're also looking to provide a safe environment. So we have gone through um, and implemented many recommendations for school safety and security practices. This came out of a walkthrough with the um, police department, fire departments, uh, director of maintenance, superintendent, um, head custodians, myself um, during the summer. And a lot of those recommendations have um, been implemented in our forthcoming. Uh, it's not, it, that's one part of it, to have a safe building. The other part is to have a safe school environment. So through our positive behavior support plan, our crisis intervention plan, um, our safe school climate committee, we're looking at how is it emotionally and behaviorally safe for children in addition to being physically safe. And we're looking to expand opportunities for community involvement. Um, one of the biggest ones that we um, tackled, uh, are tackling this year and started last year is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Shoreline Food Pantry, and that's 
housed in the church that's right across the parking lot from our school. And um, Reverend Peter came and said, how would you like to be involved in a project to grow half um, a community, work with community garden? So our children started and growing seedlings. Then one of our teachers built a coal frame and the seedlings went from Pearson School into the coal frame, planted in the garden. Children have been watering and tending and weeding, harvesting the garden, and ultimately this food is su supplemental to the um, food that's the canned and dry food uh, items that are given to our community. But the opportunity, again, to apply their knowledge to figure out how many seeds to plant, how often to water, what you can and cannot eat, all of those opportunities are, are great opportunities for kids to see that they can make a difference with, with their learning. So our class size this year, we're pretty even at seven and seven, seven classes in grade four and seven in grade five. Um, uh, next year with our students that are coming up from Joel, as Mrs. Norman mentioned, um, she's going to send us one extra class of fourth graders and then we will maintain that number up um, seven classes in fifth grade. So our numbers are coming in pretty consistent and um, we're looking forward to having another group of fourth graders. So to that end, we have some increases in operational accounts. Um, the textbook accounts, so that is primarily to purchase additional uh, textbooks for our uh, additional fourth grade class. Our instructional materials account, there's some increases in there because we're looking to have not only additional textbooks, but we have to outfit a fourth grade class. So um, our teachers were very frugal in this process and, and they went through their closets and they found what was extra, what could be given to another class. But in the end, there are some things that we just generally do need to purchase. Um, also with instructional materials, there's some programmatic costs that are ongoing for journeys, um, workbooks and assessment booklets, and some programmatic costs for our Envisions Math program. Uh, in addition, our, uh, what's included in this uh, line item are resources for our math and reading labs. So um, that's how that is at least developed. We will uh, need one of our photocopiers, it's called a Lisa machine, um, is no longer working, so we do need to replace that. And Mr. Cross has done some um, investigating in that with the Aztec copier company, and in the end, um, the net cost to replace a copier will be about $1,500. And the last line item, that is just, um, you know, a collection there. There's, you know, $200 there, $50 here, small amounts um, that uh, is needed. Just really reflecting updating um, in current pricing. Um, a little bit more per staff development, we'll have a new teacher. Uh, we've included a couple of extra uh, student activities, joining a history bee for $150, so all told, um, about $1,000. That total amount of increase, by the way, is $18,608, and you see that in that on the slide. So we do have some decreases. Um, we've been doing more in-house copying, and so we'll have a decrease of about $1,000 in that line item. Um, we um, do not anticipate at this point additional need uh, for materials for curriculum implementation. And the uh, cost for destiny um, software maintenance and repairs and maintenance has been covered by the overall decrease. So the net increases are about $18,000. The net decreases are about $4,800. And overall, it's just shy of a $14,000 increase for Pearson School this year. That's what the, this is what it looks like in our operational totals in the bar graph. And again, that's that same um, almost $14,000 um, in comparison from this current year, 13-14, to what we are proposing for next year. Most of that, or much of that, is uh, the new grade four classroom. What we'd like to do is we would like uh, fourth and fifth graders, um, as you can imagine, their interests and their, their levels just, you know, burst forward. So we would like to continue to have our Pearson PM enrichment program. This is um, a program that um, would be available to all children in the school. 
um, and that would include ch children that are identified um, as uh, intellectually gifted, talented, and gifted students. Uh, we look to have a three-session model. Um, it would be on-site and help after school and run primarily by teachers who are currently P uh, Pearson staff. But we may need to look to our other schools. There are there certainly are talented teachers and staff members in all sites. Um, so I know um, we've done that in the past. Um, the purpose of this is to provide an opportunity for students on site, and I must say a little bit lower cost. It would be no cost to the families, um, unless there was something specific that maybe a cooking, a pasta club or something might need, you know, five dollars for, for pasta or something, but or art materials. But minimal cost. Um, and it would provide academic um, challenges. We're looking at a spelling bee, history bee, some math problem solving uh, classes, creative uh, writing, uh, cultural activities in terms of music, um, physical opportunities for children to play some games and learn some, uh, use their movement, particularly in, in this day and age where they would always have the opportunity to play outside. And very importantly for our children with some special needs, but also almost all children at this age, they're beginning to branch out and they need those social opportunities. So that would provide a, a range of opportunities for them. And I mentioned before, enrichment opportunities for our students identified as talented and gifted. And this model, uh, the three session model, would include opportunities to preserve um, the well-loved Pearson Spring Musical. We have been doing that quite successfully now for five years. It's amazing, right? It, it really is unbelievable um, when you see these children. And I have to say, I mean, I love my students, but you know, in fourth and fifth grade, there are a number of them who um, can't remember their math facts, or I'm sure, you know, may not be uh, making their beds at home, but give them this script. They teach them to sing, dance, take care of their costumes, the on and off the stage, it is, it is really inspiring to watch them. And it's become quite the community event. I mean, the people who sew costumes, donate their times, paint the sets, it's just really a, a huge community <coughs> event. We'd also like to continue opportunities for students to participate in what we call the Rise and Shine, which is a morning tutorial program. It is for children at both grades that are identified that they need just this little bit more time of support in reading and math. We use a six-week model three times a week. Um, again, it's on-site, before school, no cost to families. And there we're looking to just give those children a little bit more instruction in the Common Core State <coughs> Standards. So what implications does this have for the Pearson personnel? Well, we're going to need an additional teacher for that new fourth grade class. Um, we have been very lucky to work with Kate Madura, who's been the math coach this year. She truly has done a tremendous job incorporating not only the math coaching concept, but the math intervention model. Um, we are requesting that that go from a part-time position to a full-time position at Pearson School so that we can get in the classroom, she can get in and do more coaching and look at um, giving that intervention um, a little bit broader range of intervention opportunities. Um, we are looking for continued support of our Pearson PM enrichment program and we're looking for additional support for the Rise and Shine Learning Tutorial Program. In closing, this budget um, provides students at Abraham Pearson School um, access to a quality education. And I had a conversation this morning with a parent who's looking to pull eventually perhaps their child um, with some um, English learning language needs, perhaps out of our school system and go to another school system, which in my opinion, the school system is wonderful but I don't think it's going to serve this student as well as we would. And so I was advocating strongly that the parent think of all possible ways so that we can keep this child in our school system because we provide a quality education. There's education and then there's excellence in quality education and that's what children need in order to be successful um, in this day and age. In a few short years, 
I know they're only in fourth and fifth grade, but it won't be long before they're looking at taking the SATs and you know applying to college seven years. Uh, we're looking for our students to develop and use the knowledge, skills, and dispositions of critical thinkers and problem solvers. Not just develop them, but actually use them. And we're looking for our students to be able to develop and use their individual talents and abilities of creative and engaged learners. So our last slide is a, is a slide that I really love. Um, it's, education is not preparation for life. It is life. It's what we at Pearson School eat, breathe, and drink, and sleep, or not sleep, <laughs> when we're thinking about our students. So in closing, thank you very much for your time and your commitment to the Board of Education and for um, whatever you can do for Pearson School thank and you. students. Questions for Angela? I kind of have the same question that I asked for Joel, um, just in terms of, you know, obviously the additional fourth grade class is what it is, but expanding the need for math coaching and intervention, continuing the support for the initial program, additional support for Rise and Shine, these all sound great, um, but do we have specific objectives and goals that we are then, somebody is responsible mm -hmm. for tracking and measuring to make sure that expanding our math coaching and intervention is producing whatever, you know, we're accomplishing whatever those goals and objectives right. are. Right. So as far as the intervention, we do have data as to how many um, students are actually um, in the math intervention program. And, and with, of course, it varies from year to year. And um, it's a little hard to track because um, with the tiered intervention process, students come in and go out. And then they, come, they might come back again. We hope that they don't, but they might. Especially with Mrs. Maduro is using a model now where they're called modules. So a student is pre-tested on a module. Let's say it's basic addition. A student would be pre-tested on that. If they need work in addition module, they would receive that instruction. At the end, there's a post-test. If the children succeed, then they that, that's great. They've done that module. They need to pre-test for the next module, and it may or may not, they may or may not need that module. So it's kind of fluid as to the number of children that are going in and out. But I do have, um, for this year, um, the number of students, and it's been decreasing, the number of students that are in the math intervention lab right now are um, 14 students that are in the intervention lab at a grade two and three level, and that's 5% of the population. Um, she works, we work very, very hard and we build upon the efforts that our, our colleagues at Joel. And so what we do is we look at all of their recommendations. Every child who comes from Joel comes with an orange folder and we look and we see what interventions have been put in place over time, starting perhaps at K, one, two, three, and then we build on that and we follow many of their, recommend their recommendations and then we take it to the next level. We have 31 students, to, to your point, not just to focus on the math, but currently 31 students, or 11% of our population, are in um, intervention for um, social skills, counseling, behavior intervention. And we have 28 students, or 10% of our students, receiving tier two or tier three intervention for math. A oh, reading math, excuse me. So, um, Yes, we do keep data. We also keep data on uh, information on each individual student. They're very detailed tiered intervention sheets that are formulated on a rotating cycle every seven weeks so that we can see the children's data. We track that through AIMSWEB, um, which is also used at the special education department by the special education department so that if a child has gone through tier one, tier two, tier three, if at some point we decide to go to an evaluation on this child, we have all of that data. And then, let's say the child is placed and determined to be in need of special education services, then all of that data can very easily be given to the special education department, and they can build on that because it's the same, the same program. <coughs> so they, can, they have that data, and there's not a disconnect between what they're looking at and what um, the tier interventionists have been looking at. Okay. And maybe the numbers, I thought you said the numbers are dropping, so if the numbers are 
dropping, why they need to well, what, <laughs> Right. Well, what we're doing is we're looking at the coaching models. So right now, um, the num while the numbers right now, and I have to say these numbers were at the beginning of the year, what we find is as, the as time goes on and children begin to look at the curriculum, um, we do have some growth or some increase in referrals for students at Tier 2 or Tier 3 intervention. And we're seeing that now. In December, January, February, we tend to pick up children and with, uh, referrals to students at intervention. But what we're looking at really is for that coaching model to be expanded, for kids to be able to go into the classrooms and work with those teachers. Um, the model that we're using this year is um, Kate has provided professional development around number talks and mathematical practices. So she provided that PD. Um, she's done a lot of modeling in different classrooms and going in and doing that while also you know, running the lab. Um, the, the next step is for the teachers to do some peer coaching and to go in and observe each other and look at how their colleagues are using these strategies with number talks. And then in the then after January, Kate and myself will go in and we will observe the teachers utilizing these strategies. But there's so much for them to do. You know, there's the, the new uh, Common Core curriculum, there's the mathematical practices, there's the intervention piece, how best to differentiate instruction at a tier one level. Um, so there's the pullout program for tier two and tier three that when you put all of that together, it really is a full-time job. So the other, <coughs> again, the other part of that is that we have one coach interventionist for K-5. Right, I know. And we have four um, literacy um, coach interventionists for K-5. So um, part, of, part of the intent initially was the fact that um, we needed to look at how it would work. Um, we've now, we're now into our second year with it. We have um, clear data about the effectiveness of the model, right. and it needs to, it, it needs to be able to grow as it as it is um, as it's developed. And I guess um, what I, I just want to make sure is as we move forward and expand and try new things, that we're making sure that whatever new things we implement, that we're investing money in, that somebody at some point is reporting back to the board. This, these were our goals and objectives. This is what we wanted to accomplish. Here's the evidence that we have accomplished it, or here's the evidence that we haven't, and we need to look at, at shifting those mm -hmm. funds and shifting that model. So that we're clear at the outset, by expanding Kate's role, and, and you know I'm, mm -hmm. um, that by expanding Kate's role, this is specifically what we hope to accomplish with that expansion of that role, so that we can go back to our community when they say, well, we gave you extra money to expand that and supported you in that budget, and we can say, here's how it's working, here's our evidence that it's working, here's what we've accomplished for our kids, mm -hmm. um, that it can be a, a little bit more concretized for them. And to that end, Mrs. Um, O'Donnell leads the, the team up, um, Mrs. Norman, Mrs. Smith, uh, myself, uh, Mrs. O'Donnell, and Kate, we meet on a, um, a, minimally on a monthly basis. And we have outlined goals, and I think part of the problem with Mrs. Majora, I don't know, you know, is that <laughs> she has this, and, and we've had to say, that, all right, so for this year, these are the goals. These are your concrete goals that we're going to be working on. This is what we're going to be doing in terms of curriculum development. This is what, and the when and the how. And this is what we're going to be doing in terms of the coaching model. And this is what we're going to be doing in terms of the intervention model. And this is what we're going to be doing in terms of PD and your PD and the PD that's built around, um, you know, the different aspects. So um, we do have um, that information that we have set clear and specific goals with the teachers um, so that you're absolutely right. You know, otherwise there's just so much to do and we want to be sure that what we're doing is very focused right. and that we're able to determine, you know, whether or not, what the variables are. Um, that being said, with trying a new model like this, um, you know, we're trying a lot of different things this year. We have the new Envisions program. We have um, the SBAC assessment, you know, coming up. We have a new teacher evaluation plan. So we are putting a lot of things into place that hopefully will bear. Have you found a reduction in uh, special ed referrals since you started the coaching model? I don't have exact numbers for that, but I would say I would believe yes. Um, it seems that the children 
who are exiting from um, special education, uh, from the tiered services. They have, many of them have been in there for a while, and many of them have, had, have received fairly intensive in interventions. You know, Kate and I were having a conversation today. Sometimes you have a child that gets to tier three, and they're there for a while, and it, it takes time to ferret out what is the real reason that a child would be at tier three level for so long. Um, but you need to really look before we go into that evaluation process, we need to look. You know, is it is it a health issue? Is the child not wearing, and we have one that doesn't wear the glasses, you know? Is it, um, is it an attention issue? So are there strategies that could be put in place through a school psychologist? I'm just thinking that those numbers could be used to... Right. To support, yes. Right, since that's a huge expense. I mean, if that's really what, it, what the intent is, is to reduce the number of students who are referred to special education, then that would be a number that would indicate whether or not it was, it was successful. Right. It's hard to determine sometimes, too, you know, the, the number of children that we are um, through intensive intervention. And like I said, our colleagues at Joel School, they use a model where they document all tier one interventions. So we get some kids and they have these folders like this of things that have happened over the course of, even as a pre-K student, and um, what are those tier one interventions that they've tried. So there are many children that in, you know, may not even make it into tier two or tier three because of the interventions that have been placed, put in place over the course of a few years. Then there are those kids that, that do end up in tier three and then we're looking and saying, you know what, it's been a while, we've tried this, this, and this, we've explored with the family options. Sometimes we ask the families to work with the healthcare providers. Sometimes we um, bring in our own resources, you know, or, and in the end, some do need to go to evaluation. But for the most part, those that do be fine typically end up qualifying for services. Right, and that's, and that's where I don't think that's what either of us is trying to apply that, you know, yeah. students who need services need right. services. Right, right. But if the purpose of the program is to try to address the needs of our students more effectively before it gets to that level, mm -hmm. it would be great to try to see if this different model is working to help accomplish that, mm -hmm. that goal. Do you mind if I interject here? Because I am such a believer of the coaching model. Yeah. I think the other piece is I don't want to just attach to the intervention, because the other piece of the, co piece of the coaching model is to enhance the classroom instruction. Mm -hmm. So as a common core and all of new components come in to improve instruction at that initial level where they're not even being, children aren't even being brought up to intervention because the teachers are improving their strategies and right. toolbox, so to speak, right. Right. before that has to happen. So if we can empower that give and take versus at the administrative level when we go in, it's more of an evaluative tool, mm -hmm. whereas coaching really helps for mm -hmm. teachers have an opportunity to mm -hmm. receive professional development, go ahead, go back and try that professional development, and then evaluate themselves with a, not, a person who's not an administrator to say, how am I doing? Right. Know, what else do you see right. and, and how, how that works? Uh, given the size of both of our schools, um, when you look at the 34 folks, well, 33 that I have, and 15 that Angela's going to have, that's a lot of folks for one person to help coach mm -hmm. and to bring that And, and just to be up. clear, I don't have a, an issue or an agenda with any of these models. It's really just about making sure that what we're doing is accomplishing the goals and objectives that we're trying to, mm -hmm. so that if it's not working, we're not throwing, you know, good money after bad, or whatever that expression, bad money, I don't know what the expression is, but we're, that we're doing the things that are working, and that if things aren't working, we're looking at those things and saying, we thought this looked great, but for some reason it's not works, so whether it's tweaking that program or finding, so just making sure that we're achieving the, you know, having clear goals for these programs, that's all. It's, right. I'm definitely not trying to speak for or against, it's really just making sure that we're doing what we want, you know, doing the best for our students with our resources. So I think you could look at teacher evaluation as well as student learning. And, and that's for, you know, for, you know, just making sure somebody's keeping track of all that, so letting us know. Okay, anything else for Angela? Thank you for this opportunity.